Hello. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? How about now? Yep. Cool. Uh, I just sent you an email. Saw that. Thank you. I forgot to change my shirt. You want to go do that? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm tired today. Me too. All right. It's been super hot here. I know we talked about this, but quorum is always six, right? Sorry, say that again. I know we talked about this already, but quorum is always six, right? Correct, yeah. Hi, Victor, you're going to have to accept the request to join as a panelist. Hi, Milan. Hey, everyone. Hi, Farah. Hi, Good how are you? you? You too. I'm well. I like the thundercloud behind Jason. Hadass is here, Madeline's here. Victor just needs to accept being promoted to a panelist, but I think he probably joined the meeting and stepped aside. If I was a betting woman, which I'm really not, but that's what I usually do. Here we go, 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 folks. <laughs> I love your singing. Love singing. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I said, I love your singing. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, AB's joining us. Hmm. All right, she's accept my request. Hey, Amy, good to see you. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Daniel, long time no see. Yeah. Sterling. Okay, we got Victor. Nailing it tonight. Are you happily settled in your hotel room, Teresa? I am. Okay. The internet is a little bit slow, so I apologize if I go off camera just to keep fidelity. Totally get it. Hi, Lizzie. Lizzie's joining. That's great. He's here and ready to roll.
All right. Danielle and Hadassah, I made you co-host. I'm going to also make you one, Teresa, so you can share your screen when it gets to your portion. Everybody's co-hosts. Not really. Let me have forum two. So I'm pulling up all the tabs of managing a meeting, um, cool beans. And we do have some members of the public with us today. Soledad's joining. Flo is going to join here shortly. Oh, yeah. Okie dokie then. Well, in that case, let's get rolling. Um, Amy, are you able to monitor the Q&A this evening? Gains. Cool. And a reminder for panelists, um, uh, please keep chat communications. Uh, if you use the chat, um, please only use it to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with someone. If there's a comment you want to make to the group, please make sure you make it uh, verbally uh, and on camera so we can capture it for the public record. Um, and we'll reiterate for members of the public, you can use the QA for um, any basic or procedural questions you might have, but for bigger questions, we have public comment at the end of this meeting. So uh, uh, Amy may ask you to save that question for public comment. And with that, uh, we'll kick off um, uh, this evening's meeting. Uh, with our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the Arapaho, Ute, and Cheyenne tribes, the traditional custodians of the land on which the police oversight panel and Boulder Police Department operate, and pay our respects to their elders past and present. I want to welcome everyone to this evening's meeting, um, including members of the public. Thank you for being here. Members of the panel, OIR group, city staff, Farah, thank you all for being here as well. I know this has been a particularly busy week for many of us as we interview IPM, uh, IPM monitors, uh, the new independent monitor uh, for the city. And I, I really appreciate um, uh, panelists uh, and city staff, consultants, all, all the work that's gone into that and then being present at today's meeting. Um, sorry, going through my notes, we went through Q&A. Uh, for members of the public and for the public record, uh, if you'd like to submit a complaint against an officer of the Boulder Police Department, uh, you can do so uh, at our website, which is bouldercolorado.gov forward slash services forward slash police hyphen oversight. You can also contact the oversight panel over email at police oversight panel at bouldercolorado.gov with any feedback or general inquiries that you might want to get in touch with us about. I'm going to read through our agenda for this evening. So at the top of agenda, we're going to welcome uh, Lizzie Friend and A.B. Barlow, our new panelists. We'll also approve our June 14, 2023 minutes. We'll get a status report on the hiring of a new independent monitor. We'll get a, our consultants update on the police oversight panel ordinance work, uh, particularly the police oversight ordinance work group. Then we'll get updates from any subcommittees that might have them, uh, in particular, the community engagement sub subcommittee on our recent community outreach event. Then we'll get the, uh, the interim independent police monitor update, which will include the IPM monthly report uh, and their site visit this week. And then we'll open up this meeting for public comment. So to kick us off, welcome Lizzie and AB. It's a pleasure to have you all on the panel uh, and maybe to kick us off, if we, uh, I'd love to give you both just a minute to introduce yourselves to the panel and to the public um, to, to tell us a bit about yourselves and what brings you to police oversight work. Uh, and so I'm going to go, Lizzie, you're, you're right to my left, so I'm going to kick it to you first. Great. Thank you, Daniel. Hi, everyone. Um, I am so honored and excited to be here joining you all. 
Uh, a little bit about me, I currently work at my day job. I work for the city and county of Denver. I manage a section of the Denver Department of Public Health and Environment. Um, I work with our data analytics teams, our epidemiology and communicable disease teams. Uh, but I also have experience working for the Denver Sheriff Department and with the broader Department of Safety. So um, that experience is what brought me here and I'm, I'm really excited to continue that work with you all. Um, and I'll just say too, I know, you know, it's been a very tough time for the panel and I've been, um, you know, watching from the sidelines as an alternate. I've been so impressed by how you all have navigated this and um, I'm really just looking forward to joining you all and doing some great work together. So thank you for having me. Thanks, Lizzie. AB, love to hear from you. Hi, they, uh, on the spot, <laughs> right? But um, I echo everything that Lizzie says, has, was saying, um, I'm happy to be here and have been watching everything that's been going on and eager to be a part of what we're creating here, which oversight is important. In my regular world, I'm, I'm a coach you know, a life coach. I'm also a ceramicist and I live here in North Boulder. Nice and short and sweet. Thanks. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, since, uh, since it happened this week, since we prepared this agenda, uh, that Sam has resigned from the panel and I wanna acknowledge that. Um, also publicly to thank him for his service. Um, he, uh, he had to resign for personal reasons and had a really good conversation with him. Um, and, and I'm hopeful there will be opportunities uh, for Sam to still uh, participate and work with us, particularly through the Legacy Committee. Um, when it comes to filling Sam's seat, there, <laughs> I don't know how many times we've said this in the last three years, uh, there's a bit of a, um, uh, we lack guidance from the ordinance on how to do this because Sam was one of our student seats <laughs> on the panel. Um, and so, uh, and, and none of our alternates are currently designated as students. And so we're looking to legal guidance on how to, um, how to proceed with filling Sam's seat um, while also, thank you, Farah, thank you, Soledad, thank you, Hadassah, for addressing this issue with the ordinance updates. Uh, and so more news to come. We're, we're right in the, the fresh thick of it, but I wanted to make sure you all knew that um, as, we, as we work forward. Of course, that doesn't impact our, our quorum. Uh, we, we need to maintain a quorum to continue <laughs> conducting our business and to eventually resume full business as a panel. Um, but we do want to get it addressed as soon as we can and, and um, uh, be able to make that uh, information available to the public as well. With that, though, I did want to just check if anyone had any questions um, uh, for the new panelists, any questions um, for, for me or Hadassah or, or city staff about um, Sam's departure, any, any questions in this area before we move on? Hello, was that? Yeah, uh, I just want to say that you'll be receiving emails from me um, because Sam is on three separate panels who the, the case reviews um, have already been scheduled and he was the third panelist and he was also assigned to two other cases um, for the, that the case reviews have not yet been scheduled for. So I'm going to be looking for volunteers to fill in um, these the three case reviews are scheduled in early August. And I would appreciate your cooperation. <laughs> I'll try to give you a heads up on how much work each would take. Thanks, Flo. Yeah, and that's and that's just to uh, as a reminder for folks we um, uh, related to our work stoppage, we did vote as a panel um, to pause taking on new cases as a panel until we've sorted out the issues with the ordinance um, and, and, and got those fixed and, and just kind of re-secured our position. But we did, um, with that vote, confirm that we were gonna follow through on reviewing any cases that the panel had already voted to approve. So we weren't gonna back out of that commitment. And it, um, I wanna just um, acknowledge how important it is with our case reviews that we complete them in a timely manner. And so yes, when Flo's emails go out, if, if you can participate in those, car, uh, those case reviews, uh, please respond as soon as you can to flow so that we can keep those that process going um, for everyone involved in those cases. Um, they deserve closure and we want to make sure um, we want to make sure we follow through on that commitment. 
Any other thoughts, comments, concerns? In that case, uh, we'll move on to approval of the June minutes. Um, does anyone have any suggested changes to the minutes or any questions about the minutes? Cool beans. And this is a reminder too, if you ever have to miss a meeting, um, that the minutes are there for you to review what happened at the meeting. Those are, of course, available to the public to review. Um, and then, of course, our meetings are also available online if you want to watch the full meeting. I, I do encourage that. That's been helpful for me when, I, when I've had to miss meetings. Um, but with that, do I have a motion? I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve the June minutes. Do I have a second? Second. It's Milan. And uh, panelists, show of hands, approval of the minutes. That's a full. So the minutes are approved. Next up, I will hand our status report on the new monitor over to Amy. Thanks, Daniel. Amy Kane, uh, equity officer for the city of Boulder, doing double duty since we've also lost our administrative support this evening. Um, so I'm trying to also let Sterling promote Sterling as a panelist, but my computer's being wonky. So yes, the independent monitor, we narrowed it down to three candidates. Most, some of you were present last night for the in-person um, community reception and forum. And Daniel and Hadassah, thank you so much for your participation today um, with the interview process. We had four different panels um, interviewing all three candidates. Uh, had some great feedback, and now it's in the hands of our city manager to um, analyze all the feedback from all the stakeholders, and then we'll see where she wants to move forward in that. We do hope to hire the position quickly. Um, I think that's, uh, we're really fortunate that the candidates were very qualified, and um, so we're just waiting to hear. Um, last night's, uh, for those of you who were able to attend last night's um, session online, you were given QR codes um, on the website. Feel free to hop on there and provide your feedback um, for that QR codes. For those of you who were able to be in person, same thing applies. If you hopefully picked up a sheet to provide your feedback, you can also do that at the online portal. And then um, for those of you who did not have a chance to participate, those interviews will be posted online. Hoping by the end of the week, I just pinged our communication and engagement team to see when those will be posted. Are there any questions for folks? I do have one question, Amy. Sure. Um, just to confirm, the um, feedback form will be available until when? I believe that's a great question. Let me find out. Okay. I'll get back to that. Thank you. And I do really encourage y'all, if you if you do have the time to 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 watch the interviews and submit your feedback, it 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 really is important. Um, this is one of those those opportunities for us to have pretty lasting change on the work of this panel. So I do encourage it. And I want to pause for just a second, Amy. I totally forgot. Um, but I want to acknowledge that yeah, Corey Vasquez is on to a lovely new uh, adventure. Uh, uh, she was our administrative assistant. And so I just wanted to acknowledge and thank her for all the work she did for us. Um, and and uh, panelists, uh, do uh, they should contact you, Amy, still for, for great. So things you might have contacted Corey for. Just for a little bit, um, Gianna Hidalgo who will be emailing you, so you'll all have her contact information. She's going to be covering while we um, pursue the search for another administrative specialist to support the city manager's office. And then um, the administrative services manager will determine who will be the direct support for the panel. Fabulous. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I just want to say uh, publicly how I personally appreciate Corey and the assistance that she has provided. Um, I'm not a technical who is or genius. And so she was very patient, very tolerant, uh, very understanding and always kind. And I really, really, really appreciate it. And I am going to miss her tremendously. I want that to go on record. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Madeline, it's lovely. Panelists, any other questions, comments on Corey or the monitor? 
Great. Okay. Uh, next up, then, I'm going to hand it over to Farah for an update on our police oversight panel ordinance work. Hi, everyone. Good to see you. Feels like I haven't seen some of you in a while. Um, Farah Muskinen, consultant for the city of Boulder. Um, so I um, just want to give you a brief update. I'm first. I want to um, just congratulate everybody. I felt like the community engagement event went really, really well. Um, I'm submitting that memo to the city manager on Friday. I didn't want to submit the memo before the end of the Be Heard Boulder timeframe. I wanted to wait till that was up and then um, include that feedback in the memo. Um, and just to give you um, high level, I'll share, I'll share the, the, the memo. I probably actually will give you a condensed summary of the memo, but um, essentially it was the feedback was just about trust there's just a lack of trust in every direction, community to panel, panel, you know what I mean? With the police department, the police department. And so finding a way to kind of reset and um, rebuild that trust. Um, obviously lots of comments about the selection process and um, the, the perceived bias language is currently in there. Um, it, it was pretty clear to me as a, you know, practitioner that there's a lot of confusion about the panel and its scope and what it does and what it cannot do. And so there's a misalignment of expectations. And I think that causes some tension, um, because what the panel can do is different than what the perception is. And so, um, from a basic understanding level, um, there just needs to be um, just mo more around that of really being clear about what the panel does and communicating that not just once but like consistently like all the time um, because some of the um, issues that came up in the session were were helpful but it was clear it came from a point of not really understanding what the panel does and what its scope is um, and so there were others other, and you guys have heard this, this feedback has been pretty consistent about um, having an independent counsel for the, um, for the uh, panel, um, looking at disciplinary decisions um, and um, really just figuring out um, how to bring confidence in the selection process. Um, I think, if if I were to pick like one consistent thing that was talked about both on Be Heard Boulder and at the in-person session, it was probably around the selection process and um, people not feeling comfortable about about it and it it impacting the confidence in the panel as a whole. Um, and so I think we have an opportunity to write that ship. Um, this is my not so eloquent uh, segue into the police oversight work group. <laughs> And um, I love it, but I'm kind of a nerd in that way because the way I'm facilitating it is that we have topics we cover every meeting and we have conversations. And I can tell you, and I hope that Hadassah and Soledad will jump in, uh, they've, they've been spirited, right? And so I've disagreed with some people, so people have disagreed with each other, but in the end, everything gets written down and I summarize it for the work group and you know draft some things. And I'll be very frank with you guys. Sometimes I get the draft right and sometimes I get the draft wrong, but we go back and we review it and we talk it through. And so, um, so we've had four meetings so far. Um, we do have representation from the NAACP. We do have representation. I was happy that Central Amistad, you know, had a change of heart and they've joined. And I can tell you, they, their first meeting with the NAACP representative and the Central Amistad uh, representative was last Thursday. And they were not shy. They jumped in in the conversation and, and the input that they gave was great. Like, it was awesome, their perspective that they brought to the table, particularly about the student issue that came up at our meeting last Thursday. And so um, some ideas were brought up and I have to kind of tweak, tweak some ideas with the language, but we are 100% going to address that, um, that issue um, in, in, in the proposed, in the proposed draft. Um, so we are getting there um, pretty well. Um, I mean, that's obviously, that's my perspective, but I hope Soledad and Hadassah will jump in too. Um, I'm my um, task right now 
is essentially, what's the good analogy, how I can put this? So it's like um, a puzzle. And so each meeting we take a piece and then I'm putting the pieces of the puzzle together and we read it as it go along. So the pieces that we've discussed so far, I'm putting them together in kind of like a working draft and the work group is gonna go over that. Um, and then we're gonna keep plugging away and continue adding to it until we get kind of the whole puzzle. Um, and so, but we will have a working draft by next week. However, it doesn't have like the most, you know, prominent topic. We haven't touched the selection process yet. Um, we're, we'll be talking about the selection process for the first time on the 18th. Um, so I think that's going to be important. And that's going to take more than one meeting. We meet um, once a week for two hours. Um, and we've been pretty consistent about that. Um, and um, one thing I should let the panel know is that I'll be doing a briefing to council um, of kind of the progress so far on July 27th. Um, just kind of where we kind of, I think I'm going to bring it back from March, February, March to where we are now and where we're going. And the work group is scheduled to kind of assess where we are, um, at the end of this month. So be first week of August, I believe it's our August 1st or 2nd meeting. Um, but I feel confident and I think it depends on how our selection process and other topics that we have to talk about how that go. But I do think that we can have something ready, um, to go to council um in October and I think if I'm looking at the timing our community engagement for a potential draft will probably be more so end of August beginning of September um but I'll, I'll know more after next week um and it'll be primarily you know to just get feedback um so that's that's kind of where we are in a quick quick nutshell but I do want to um, express that we are making very good progress. The conversations have been very thoughtful, very open, very candid. Um, and I really appreciate the perspectives that have been brought to the table. I do want to express my sincere appreciation for Madeline because she worked with me really hard, almost weekly, daily for the NAACP rep. I don't know when she sleeps because I have text messages at 1.30 in the morning. Um, so just making sure that we had, a, you know, the right person or a person um, from the NAACP. So that voice is at the table too. And we have a great person who has, you know, jumped in. And so that wouldn't have happened without Madeline's persistence, because obviously I don't have the connection. That was Madeline's connection and her persistence to get it. She got one person approved in like three hours. <laughs> so, um, so I really appreciate Madeline for that because we were missing that voice at the table. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. And I hate to put Hadassah and Soledad on the spot, but like I just gave you the consultant perspective. And so I think it would be good for you to have the participant perspective, you know, as well. So sorry that I'm doing that, but I, I really think your voice is probably more important than mine on, on this issue. <laughs> Both like, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I, not I think, I, I agree um, in terms of like the conversations we've had haven't um, always been the easiest, right? Like, and, and easy, by easy, I mean, like, we're not all necessarily coming, we're not all on the same page initially when we start the conversation. Um, you know, we have different perspectives of how we think oversight should be done specifically in the city of Boulder. Um, and so sometimes that can get a little spicy. And um, I, I do feel like we've had very productive conversations in terms of like, we can, we can find a way from all of these different perspectives, something that hopefully um, I am, I'm very hopeful that we will find something that will work for all parties involved in the end. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's what we want in the end. So, um, yeah, I, I feel, I feel great about it. Um, so in my, and the thing that I want to share with you all basically is that the meetings are amazingly productive. The um, uh, Sarah has done an amazing job at keeping us on track, uh, on time. So it really feels like a very valuable use of our time. It's a lot of time, but it's very valuable use of it. 
uh, we receive uh, emails from FARA preparing for the meeting, and then we receive meet, uh, emails with information afterwards. So um, it's it has been uh, very intense in, in, terms, uh, in terms also in the amount of work. Um, but I think we're, 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 it feels very productive. And um, the other thing is that we are, since uh, FARA is taking notes, we, we see the progress. And we can see where we where we start um, at at any given point, and where we're finishing that point of the conversation. Um, and I think that that has been really helpful because there's not a lot of kind of tangling in 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 conversations that you know we can get you know very inspired um, on, and then keeping it real, keeping it grounded, and this is what we're here to do. So I think I really really appreciate that. I really appreciate the work uh, you're putting on it, um, Farah, and how you're facilitating the conversation. Um, and, you know, and it, and it puts, as you say, I think that we're also uh, in a process of aligning expectations. So um, even for the panel, you know, it's like, whoa, we should do this. I don't know, maybe that's not where we do, you know? So I think really keeping it real, keeping it grounded, and keeping it very productive and and it seems like a very good use of the time that we're putting into other panels so i um oh sorry danielle the only thing i was going to add is that i wanted to wait because i did promise you guys updates and so it's not that i forgot about that it's just that i wanted to wait until we had some more substance so I think after our meeting on the 18th, um, as we go through kind of the, the, the working draft that we're creating, I'll be able to bring in, you know, the panel members and send a more substantive update. Cause like for me to send you an update and being like, we discussed the purpose, you know what I mean? Like that just doesn't make sense. So we will have a little bit more meat after our next meeting um, on July 18th. And then I'll be able to kind of share with the panel a little bit more so. So that's why I haven't shared yet because we haven't really gotten there yet. But that's it, Daniel, for me. Thanks, Vera. Uh, panelists, any other questions, comments about the ordinance updates? Yeah, Milan. I just want to appreciate, have a moment of appreciation for all the work that's being done by the working group. Like, it seems like it's been amazing. And I am so looking forward to. Um, learning more, but totally appreciate what you just said, Farah, about needing to have more meat and all that. But um, just want to say thank you so much for spending that time. I know it's a lot of work. I know it's really super important for all of us and the work that we're going to do moving forward. So the pressure is on you. And I really, really appreciate you. So thank you. Anyone else? Just give you a minute. All right. In that case, uh, we'll move on to subcommittee updates. Um, and I'll, I'm going to take this opportunity. So uh, Sam was chair of the Legacy Committee um, and, and, and had expressed uh, um, hopeful at some point in the future he might continue to work with the Legacy Committee. Uh, this is a reminder, you know, we've talked as a panel many times before of um, how community involvement might uh, might work through our committees. Uh, but what that means is, is that the legacy committee does not have a chair at this time. Um, and Daniel, can I correct yeah. you on that? Sam yeah. and I were co-chairing that, so I'm still on board. Oh, so thank you, Chico. There it is, and we still have a chair. Chico, then I'm gonna just hand it over to you. Do you have any updates with the legacy committee? No, no, it's not at the moment. <laughs> Thanks, Chico. Great. Oh, fantastic. That's actually a huge relief. <laughs> uh, like I said, we are we are right in the midst of, of getting through this. So thank you, Chico. Um, Hadassah, do we have any updates on government governance? No, we didn't have a meeting this last month um, because right now mostly we're just focused on ordinance stuff. So thanks, Hadassah. And, and as a reminder, Hadassah and I are currently uh, the only uh, official members of the governance committee. And for that reason, we have not um, 
elected a, a chair of the committee because we, we do not feel it's appropriate for the co-chairs to also chair a committee. Um, but given the current work stop stoppage, we're just holding work in the governance committee until uh, we get to back back to work on general um, general panel business. Um, with that, communicate uh, community engagement subcommittee. I'll hand it all over to you all um, from an update. Yeah. One quick thing. Um, because we have new panelists, do we want to give people the opportunity to kind of just give a quick what our committees do for the new panel so they can consider? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Chico, do you want to pitch legacy first? Uh, by, by and large, the Legacy Committee looks at historical events that have happened, and we try to see whether we can have common themes that will help or build the work of uh, police oversight. So by and large, in a nutshell, it's looking at historical trends, past events. Dasa, do you want you want to pitch governance? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, governance is um, mostly mostly focused on specifically the bylaws because that is what we as the panel have control over. Um, and so, any updates that we would like to see to the bylaws, we kind of put them together and then bring them to the panel for a vote um, to officially vote in the, any updates. Um, we hope to in the future um, also sort of help facilitate some of the process for like any future potential ordinance amendments that we would like to propose that have that be sort of the part of the panel that can help sort of contribute to that work in the future. Awesome. Thanks, Hadassah. Uh, community Engagement and Communications Committee, you want to go next, give us an update and a pitch for your community? Sure. So we create opportunities for the people of Boulder, police officers, um, anyone who wants to know um, about what the panel is, what we do. Currently, we're supporting the work of the ordinance. So um, Farah had mentioned the draft. So when that draft comes, we will have another event. And that's currently what we're doing um, right now. Since this panel has been created, we've only had one event. And now we've had our second event. Um, which was highly successful. We, we doubled our attendance. So we had 11 people at the first one, we had 22. So that is fantastic. I wanna take this opportunity to really thank Milan for all her work um, on the flyer and doing meetings with me. So um, Milan, just thank you so much you know, for your assistance. Um, as we've seen before, when we rely on the city to do things, it's not necessarily the best thing. Right, but also it was very helpful for them to just say, hey, choose a date, choose a time, get that all set up. But when they showed us the flyer, we were like, no way are we gonna send this out. It was something with like lights and sirens and it was just very uh, almost triggering. Uh, so again, thanks to Milan for you know really reproducing that. Um, getting the media involved was also a success. We hadn't had that before. So I think all three of us got on camera at one point or another. And I didn't expect the, the cameras to show up at our physical meeting. So when the camera walked in and about 30 minutes into the thing, it was just like, okay, this is good. Um, we did miss our target audience, which was a Spanish speaking audience. Um, you know, outside of some family members, we really didn't have that community represented in that audience of all. So we definitely missed that mark. And that's something that we have to continue to strive. Um, how do we incorporate this other audience and get that message out. It was also interesting how people didn't stay on topic. And so some of that dissent about trust was really just some rabble rousing that was not productive. Um, and I noticed four members of a particular group walked in at all at the same time, and they all got up and left at the same time. So they were part of this other coalition that brought in some noise that was just um, what we want. And when we come to the draft meeting, we're really going to be focused on draft. So that's something we have to really um, tweak about our messaging when we're going to have this next meeting to really get community input on the things that we want to change in the ordinance and their opinions on that. Um, I also want to thank Soledad as well. 
um, and anyone who is on stage and being uncomfortable in that moment. Daniel has a theater presence, but for most of us, it was just like, ah. Uh. <laughs> so um, Milan or Soledad or anything you'd like to add? Um, I actually, I'm wondering, do we have a time frame for the next meeting? Um, and how could we prepare for it? Um, I'm going to be gone for the next couple of weeks, so I just want to kind of start thinking about it if if that's necessary. Maybe that's a question for Amy. Uh, I don't know. No, Are it's a question for me because I think you're talking about the 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 work yeah. the work group, right? And so what I, I like. When are we gonna? When do we need to aim for a meeting with the community and for the first draft? I guess that's what yeah. And so what I had mentioned was I was thinking the um, end of August, early September, but I won't know until definitely after next week and definitely after our conversations about um, the selection committee and some of the other meteor stuff we haven't gotten to. So, um, but it it'll definitely be no later than the end of August. So, um, but I'll have, I'll definitely, I'll have a better idea in the next couple of weeks. It's just hard to predict because you don't know how the conversations are going to go um, and how much time we're going to really need to flush things out. But, but, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can to the extent, you know, I can to, you know, get us to get us to that, to another community event and then get us to council um by October in October in October so I guess we have that amount of time approximate amount of time to um reach out to the communities that were not represented during our last meeting yeah I yeah. think so and to be quite frank with you like I've done these events so many times like it's the second time around obviously we learned a lot like this time of doing this and so I think it, it just it, it naturally gets easier the more you do it. So I, I imagine um, um, the amount of work that was done for this one, I don't know if we'll need it at the same level, but we'll have we'll have um, enough time to do the community outreach for sure. Cause I'll, ha I'll have an idea in the next two weeks for sure. I just wanna uh, say that it's important for us before scheduling to look at the calendar and the activities happening in Boulder, um, even though we double our attendance, if the day we, we picked, it was the day where a lot of things were happening. And I think that impacted um, the attendance in our event. So just really kind of making sure that we're not um, scheduling something when, you know, other important things are happening uh, that we're gonna lose um, audience. So. Can I jump in real quick? When when is mm -hmm. can we confirm when the next community engagement committee meeting is? The first Wednesday of the month. So first Wednesday. What date is it? <clears throat> so that will be August, August 2nd, then? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so for folks who um uh, Lizzie and AB, even if you're not an official member of a subcommittee, uh, we're all welcome and invited to um, all committee meetings. And so we're welcome to drop in. Uh, so in this instance, any panel member that does want to um, get involved with supporting that event, um, that's that's the date of the next meeting. Um, mm -hmm. And noting, you know, that's August 2nd. So that's, that's, that's a pretty tight turnaround for the event too. Yeah. Just one note that I noticed that um, the calendar that we have, it doesn't have all the events because some of them were sent to our personal emails instead of the city email. So if we could resend those uh, calendar invites to our city email, that would be great because I, I get lost because I have some meetings in my personal email calendar and some others in the um, uh, city uh, email account. So if, if we can just send them all to one place, that would be great especially now that we have new people, so. And Dan, I just wanna jump in just to manage expectations. I think, particularly with the community events, like I think there's always a fundamental effort to schedule things that are most convenient for community members, particularly the time after work and all that kind of stuff. It, but 
there's always going to be something happening. And so like when we talked about the date in the community engagement committee, it seemed like an open date, but obviously after we selected that date, other things were scheduled, right? That are out of our control. So, I mean, we'll do the best that we can. I think everybody, when we had that conversation in the committee, um, you know, we're mindful of the date and predict, I remember we talked about what day of the week is better, what time is better. Um, but I don't want the panel to feel disappointed if, you know, the turnout isn't as what's expected because you just never know what's going to be scheduled. Like that political event thing was scheduled after we had selected our, you know, our date, you know what I mean? So I just, I just don't want you guys to have that as um, something to, as a point of disappointment for you, because like, there, it's just so much out of out of our control with that stuff. But you know, we did really make a sincere effort to pick a date and a convenient time for um, for for community to attend. Those those are both uh, great great points, Apara and Soledad. I uh, personally struggled because I really wanted to be there, and uh, Milan <laughs> and I had long in-depth conversation uh, and just had to boil down and choose right, right now i don't even remember what the other thing was but i think it probably was the boulder flag raising i'm not sure but at any rate uh, this is one um gathering that is critical it's critical i mean it, it really stands and speaks to the core of what we're doing and they are our customers the, the community that's our number one customer so yeah uh i uh I, I don't know you're right uh, some things out of control but um keep it all possible i will not let that happen again that's a good one any other questions comments panelists um and so uh while you think if you have any questions or comments uh lizzie and ab uh you will soon be asked to join a committee um so if you want to give it some considered thought and um uh if you if you want to try out some committees by dropping in on a meeting that's great um but when you know what committee you'd like to participate on feel free to just reach out to one of the co-chairs uh, co-chairs uh, co of the committee and let them know and then they'll let us know as chairs of the panel um, and you can re reach out to either I or Hadassah if you're interested in the governance committee um, we are a very lonely two on that committee so uh, so I, I encourage you to consider joining us um, but yeah whatever you decide just uh, just keep us in the loop Cool beans. So uh, moving right along, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Flo for our interim independent monitor uh, update. Uh, good evening. Uh, I've been running all over the Hotel Mag, uh, Hotel Colorado, Boulderado, looking for good internet. So um, Teresa M Magula, who's here with me tonight, is going to share her screen for the PowerPoint. Um, also here from OIR group is its leader, Mike Janako. Uh, we're serving as the interim independent police monitor. Teresa and I are in Boulder. We uh, participated in, we attended the community forum last night for the, uh, with the IPM finalists and we participated in different panels today. And, um, I mean, I don't want to speak for Teresa. I think you're, uh, but we're both here doing different roll call briefings with the police department and um, doing ride alongs and uh, met last night, um, the panelists who were at the community forum and Hadassah and Daniel were part of the panel today. So I think it's been a very productive trip. And even though uh, the OIR group's tenure may be coming to an end. I think the information that we've gleaned um, will be powerful and help with the transition when a new monitor starts. Teresa, did you wanna add anything to that? She might be busy sharing the screen. Yeah. <laughs> no, unfortunately my camera will not also work with screen share. So as decided, it is one or the other. <laughs> Apologies for not being on camera at the moment. Um, yeah, absolutely agree with Flo. Very productive visit. 
I am very appreciative of your city's hospitality um, in having us here. I am really looking forward as well to providing the new monitor with a very robust and um, to the extent that the mon new monitor um, would like us to transition what we have learned and, and do a, a knowledge transfer um, with the intention of having the new monitor come in and really be able to hit the ground running. It is critical that the transition happens smoothly um, and that the new monitor is able to jump right into to the role um, at this point. So we have greatly enjoyed our time here and it was really a pleasure to meet many of you in person, be face to face, have the opportunity to do so. Of course, we did not anticipate that our tenure would be this lengthy. Um, and so in any other circumstances, we would have really liked to have been on the ground at an earlier date. So now we've made that happen and we appreciate that opportunity. So thank you for your hospitality and for the work that you've continued to do throughout this time. Um, all right, so um, can you move to the first substantive slide, uh, which is focused on the panel's uh, oversight work? So you know, this last month, the panel did not meet to conduct a case review. There were a couple that were rescheduled to August. Um, there are no cases that the panel reviewed that are still pending department disposition, but there are still 10 cases awaiting panel review, five are scheduled, and three of those have to be a little bit repopulated and five are pending and will have to be scheduled. Uh, I wanna get into some of the case closures that occurred since our last meeting. And I've, I've expanded this section a little bit uh, in um, reviewing the ordinance as part of our work. It occurred to me that the ordinance requires the monitor to report on all closed cases, not just the uh, cases the panel reviewed. So, and I think this is especially important now that the panel's not reviewing new cases so that the panel and the public is aware of the oversight work that still goes on on the part of the monitor. But this first case, uh, a case from 2022, uh, the zero, Three nine uh, is a case that the panel reviewed and conducted a case review on, and this involves a case where uh, involves the mother of a man who was murdered in 2020. Uh, the police department arrested the suspect uh, the very next day, and that criminal case is still pending. The deceased mother filed a complaint on December 8, 2022, stating that. Um, officer one didn't conduct an adequate investigation regarding the defendant, the now, the suspect now defendant's motive and didn't provide her with complete and updated information. Uh, she expressed dissatisfaction with officer one's former supervisor, who's officer two, who she said did not appropriately respond to her complaints. And uh, in 2021, in May, she submitted via the department's website, a contact the chief email regarding Officer One, complained about Officer One's lack of communication, requested that the department reassign the case to a different detective, and asked to meet with the chief. And uh, the mother did not receive a written response from the department. There were a number of allegations. Um, and with respect to Officer One, who's no longer a department employee, he was accused of not uh, conducting an adequate investigation, uh, uh, violating the uh, de department's customer service value by not providing to the mother a complete and updated information or meeting with her as requested. Um, officer two, the supervisor, uh, was the allegation was that he did not appropriately respond to the woman's uh, complaints about officer one. And with respect to officer three, the allegation was that 
officer three did not respond to or fail to ensure that the department respond to an individual's contact the chief email regarding the homicide investigation. And I will say that at the insistence of the monitor, this was a bifurcated investigation. Um, the department conducted the investigation of uh, uh, regarding the allegations against officer one and two and an outside investigator, third party investigator conducted the investigation of officer three and the city manager was responsible for the outcome with respect to officer three. With respect to officer one, the panel recommended that the allegations be exonerated, not sustained the same finding that the department made and the panel recommended that the allegation against officer two not be sustained and that was the outcome that the department reached. The panel recommended that uh, the allegation against officer three be found as not sustained and the city manager reached the same conclusion. However, the panel did make a number of recommendations which both the department and the city manager agreed with. The panel recommended that in cases involving family members of homicide victims or other serious crimes, the detective unit should establish a communications plan, provide a point of contact to the family, and advise the family um, should that point of contact change. In this case, um, while the prosecution was ongoing, the DA's office assumed responsibility for uh, contacting the mother, but that was not communicated to the mother. Um, it, the panel also felt that the unit should document in its case management system its communications with family members of homicide victims and victims of other serious crimes. Um, and as I said, the department and the city manager agreed with that. And can you move to the next uh, slide, Teresa? <laughs> Uh, the second, I don't, Teresa, I don't know, uh, her internet might not be working. The second um, panel recommendation was that the department designate one or more individuals to respond to and or coordinate responses to contact the chief emails and establish a database to track to whom contact the chief emails are routed and document within that database what, if any, response the department has provided. And the city manager agreed with that, and the department is promised to implement changes. The next, the second case that I want to talk about, next slide, please, uh, is um, MI 2023-015. And again, um, this is a case that the panel didn't vote it not to review. Oh, actually, the panel did not review, but um, the monitor reviewed and deemed it complete. This involved a dispute between a tenant in an apartment complex and the contractors that were doing renovations in the apartment above her. And it, this, the uh, woman, the downstairs tenant felt that the contractors were violating the, and the owner of that apartment were violating the homeowners association rules. And however, uh, by, she expressed that by allegedly confronting physically the contractors and entering that apartment, uh, several calls were made to the police. And on a third day that involved such a type of activity, Officers one through three responded to a call about the woman blocking the contractors from going down the stairs and yelling at them. Uh, officer one spoke with the woman while officers two and three spoke with the contractor and officer one told the woman that renovation was not a crime. The department doesn't enforce um, the homeowner association rules and she needed to leave the contractor alone. An hour later, the contractor called the officer to come back and said that the woman threw 
uh, stuff inside his van and made comments about his wife and he now wanted to press charges. The three officers returned and officer one issued the woman a summons for harassment. The woman complained that the officers were young and inexperienced and that officer one issued the summons based on poor judgment and lies due to ageism and sexism. Well, the officer's youth alleged Youth and inexperience was not is not an allegation of misconduct. The allegations of misconduct involve um, accusations against Officer One of uh, biased policing based on age and gender. Uh, the chain of command recommended that those um, allegations be exonerated, and the monitor agreed with that. Uh, I, the monitor I also recommended that the chief have the department counsel the officer about taking more care and selecting appropriate charge and consulting with supervisors or legal counsel if he was unsure of the appropriate charge and at least be able to articulate it detail the evidence that supports the specific charge. Um, and this is particularly important on a going forward basis when it comes to proving cases in court as the officer issues summonses and makes custodial arrests. The department, um, exonerated, their final disposition was exonerated for both allegations and that they were gonna conduct a supervisory review with the officer. Next slide. And finally, um, this is case MI, misconduct case 2023-002. This involved a, this occurred on New Year's Eve and a bar restaurant called the police to evict a drunken patron who refused to leave. Police arrived, officers one and two, and the woman still refused to leave. And um, eventually they grabbed hold of her and forcibly walked her out of the bar. Once outside, she screamed that the officers had abused her and refused to provide identification, preventing them from completing a notice of trespass. The bar restaurant wanted her to be prohibited from coming back. Um, because she refused to provide ID, the officers arrested and handcuffed her. Officer one patted her down and officer three removed her cell phone from her left side pants pocket. And she accused officer three of molesting her. Um, although the woman subsequently complained to officer four, a sergeant that officers one and two had used excessive force uh, as part of officers four, uh, officer four's investigation into the use of force. Officer Four interviewed the officers. Um, so there were a variety of allegations uh, with respect to officers one and two, there were use of force allegations. With respect to officer three, there were allegations about the search and uh, it constituting unlawful sexual contact, contact. And with respect to officer four, this is an allegation that when the monitor classifies a case, the monitor's free to add allegations and the monitor noticed that uh, the, the department conducts an administrative view of every use of force. But if there's a complaint about the use of force, the investigating supervisor is not supposed to conduct interviews of the officers that's supposed to be done through the PSU process. So there was an allegation about that. Um, the chain of Basically, the monitor. I, sorry, sorry, there's I, ambient I, noise here. Like some yeah. silly old ten dollar, like not no. Not, like this is, for you. <laughs> the uh, monitor agreed with the chain of command recommendations, and the department dispositions mirrored the chain of command recommendations. The use of force allegations were exonerated. The allegations regarding officers three search were not sustained. And the officer who'd been assigned to conduct the administrative view of the use of force, that allegation that he improperly inter conducted interviews of the officers that was sustained and um, he's receiving verbal counseling. Finally, just some other statistics. Um, during June, the monitor classified three cases, two of them as misconduct cases. One is a community inquiry. The monitor observed four interviews, deemed five cases, five department investigations as complete and thorough. And overall, during the month, the department closed four cases. At the end of June, 
the open docket of the monitor and the panel stood at 18. And that completes my report. Uh, and so for panelists, I uh, want to pause for just a moment and give you the opportunity for any follow-up comment on these case reviews. And so as a reminder, in accordance with the ordinance, the current ordinance, this is our opportunity to, to comment on these cases. And this is our opportunity um, um, to make those official statements. So Flo has determined what um, Flo and the OIR group have determined what details of these cases can be released in this, to the public. And those are the only details now that uh, we can make available to the public in accordance with our confidentiality agreement. However, our comments now can include and, and this I'm quoting the ordinance here, can include comments on the handling of the complaint, the fairness and thoroughness of the investigation, and the reasonableness of the adjudication. And so that said, I just want to open the floor. Panelists, uh, any, any follow-up comments related to the case reviews? Got it. And any comments or questions for the monitor or OIR group? Okay. Uh, well, next up uh, then is our public comment. And so, uh, sorry, let me pull up my notes. So uh, for public comment for the panel, uh, every member of the public will be asked if they'd like to comment and unmuted to answer. Uh, members of the public will get two unimpeded minutes to comment. And if there is an interruption or a loss of connection, uh, I will stop the clock uh, to make sure you get your full two minutes. Uh, I'll give a verbal notice of time at 20 seconds to the end. I'm also gonna put a stopwatch up on the shared screen. Um, and uh, I will ask our city uh, staff member to mute uh, your feed at two minutes, uh, just to, to, to keep to fairness. Uh, panelists, you can offer short responses at the end of a member of the public's comment. Uh, and I will pause after, um, uh, after each comment to give you that opportunity. And with that, let me pull up my stopwatch. Thank you. Uh, Amy, could I get co-host access? Good. Thank you. And with that, Amy, we'll start with uh, Amber Elise Carlson. Amber, you should, there we go. Amber, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Uh, would you like to give comment this evening? There we go. Can you hear me? We can, yeah. Hi, I'm actually with the daily camera, so I am just listening in this evening, but thank you. Thanks so much, Amber. Good to see you. Thank you for being oh, here. Good to see you. Amy, uh, Chris Olson next. Chris, you should be able to unmute yourself. Would you like to give comment this evening? Give him a second. One more notice. Uh, Chris, if you'd, uh, if you'd like to give comment this evening, you can unmute yourself. Um, if you not, if not, we will move on. No, thank you. Great, thanks, Chris. Thank you for being here. Uh, and with that, panelists, that concludes public comment for the evening. <laughs> um, I want to uh, one reminder: uh, the uh, QR code feedback. So the feedback for the independent monitor that closes uh, uh, is that Thursday night it closes, Amy, or could they still comment on Friday? Friday morning. Thank you. Thanks so much, Amy. So that's your deadline to give uh, feedback on the independent monitor. Um, elsewise, 
Uh, I'll just open it for a sec. Does anyone have any final comments, questions, concerns to bring to the panel? Fabulous. In that case, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you all and uh, look forward to the work to come. Have a good evening.